Hello there, a great evening to you indeed and many thanks for joining us on Rwanda Television News tonight. I hope that you had yourselves a great week and uh, ending the weekend, uh, entering the weekend in style. Now welcome to our edition, these are the headlines. President Paul Kagame tasked the new Sonin leaders to ensure they deliver on their responsibilities and accelerate the country's development. The 2024 Engineering Conference is slated to take place in Kigali, Rwanda in October this year. Greetings to you once again and thank you for keeping us company. On uh, Friday, President Paul Kagame uh, reiterated uh, that the oath of office for new officials should not only be a tradition, rather goes hand in hand with uh, fulfilling the responsibilities they had sworn in in the interest of the country. This is as uh, the head of state uh, received the oath of uh, the new deputy CEO of the Rwanda Governance Board, RGB, and the vice president of the Kamasho High Court, Prince Manzi. The oath received by the head of state is that of Dr. Felicien Osengu Muchiza, who was recently appointed Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Governance Board, and that of Gashongore Kadigwa, the Vice President of the Commercial High Court, both of which were recently approved by the Cabinet meeting. President Kagame emphasized that oath of office should not be just a ceremony. Nakazi. It is a heavy job, and apart from being heavy, it goes with comportments, understanding, and the policy of the nation that the job is to possess in terms of fulfilling responsibilities aligned with it. Taking oath is not a ceremony. Taking oath goes with that responsibility, and what to characterize the officials as they execute the responsibilities and the country continues to benefit and to be fast in what we do and where we want to reach. I want you to know that as you execute your responsibilities, always remember this, and this leads you in your activities. President Kagame also reiterated that the duties swelled in for by these officials are not new, just an upgrade, hence prioritizing the citizens' needs. Where you're coming from and where you're assigned now are the same responsibilities, serving the country. The changes in positions you had, but the responsibilities are the same and upgraded. I wanted that in collaboration with other levels, the work is to be done as it should. Nothing much I am to say today apart from thanking and reminding you and wish you well in your work. Dr. Felicien Osengu Muchiza, who was sworn in as the new Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Rwanda Governors Board, was before his appointment the head of research department at this board. While prior to Gashongore Kadigwa's appointment as the Vice President of the Commercial High Court, Kadigwa was a judge at the High Court since 2019. Prince Manzi, OTV News. Consumers here in Rwanda have been asking that they, uh, there be proper uh, follow-up to ensure that the prices are set for uh, commodities are, by the government are actually respected by traders. This comes as the country joined the rest of the globe in celebrating the World Consumer Day. Regardless of where you go, be it in markets or other places of trade, Complaints of traders not respecting set prices for food products are rife, and the traders we spoke to said the practice stems from the greed of those who do such things, and that there are no shortages, as some claim, while hiking prices, coupled with the fact that such traders also avoid using receipts from their electronic billing machines or EBMs. Officials at the Rwanda Consumers' Rights Protection Organization are urging the general public to be vocal about such practices. <laughs> There are many traders who do not know the rights of the consumer or their responsibilities as traders when it comes to the provision of quality products using technology. Now concerning all of those challenges that consumers encounter, we are asking them to report such incidents and to be careful when buying goods to ensure that they are not stolen. As Rwanda marks World Consumers' Rights Day, 
Officials in the Ministry of Trade and Industry are calling on traders to use EBMs when doing business, saying such requirements are going to be enforced and for consumers to strive for their rights to be respected. When we decide to establish prices for certain commodities, it is because we notice volatility in the market and we first ascertain if the supply is sufficient. And in cases when we find that it is, then we look into other causes such as speculation. After that, we look into ways of ensuring that consumers get the products at a fair market price. And the use of technology is one way of making sure that prices are not overinflated. Besides, the government provides subsidies for such machines, so there is no reason why traders should not invest in them. Let us use them to solve such problems, and on this day that marks consumer rights, let us look at the solutions being presented. World Consumers' Rights Day comes as the harvest for the 2024A season has become available, and the government has determined the proper price for key items such as maize and rice. With the 2024 Global Engineering Conference slated to take place here in Rwanda in October, engineers in the country are preparing for the major event and noting on the significance of the country hosting this major gathering. With 1,000 delegates expected to attend the conference, a meeting was held on Friday in line with organizing the major event, the first ever of its kind to be held on African soil. We are launching an event that we are going to host in October from 15th to 18th. The World Federation of Engineering Organization, UECO, and also the Executive Council meeting. Uh, that will be the first time, like she mentioned, in Africa. It will be an honor to host this event in Africa for the first time. Indeed, Rwanda hosting the 2024 Global Engineering Conference is being seen as significant around the world and says volumes about the country, especially among professionals in the field. Rwanda uh, represents some, um, um, development towards the future in, in Africa. Uh, Af Rwanda is an active country is, uh, uh, with a successful uh, industrial policy. And uh, so it's good that this first meeting uh, is, uh, is here in, uh, in Rwanda. With Rwanda pushing hard on her journey towards long-term sustainable development, the country's construction industry has remained vital to ensuring that the goals set are achieved. There's no way you can develop a country, a nation, without engineers. So I think I will take this opportunity to thank uh, the engineers who are continuing to, to support the development. Of course, as engineers, uh, we do have uh, a unique opportunity and responsibility to shape the future. The future of our nation, but also the future of our planet. So uh, the choice we make in our engineering work, the choice we make today uh, have a direct impact uh, on the world for the future generation. So it is very important we make sure we make the right choice. The 2024 Global Engineering Conference theme will be focusing on innovations for sustainable infrastructure development for the future. Moving ahead, during the last three years in the four districts of Rwanda, more than 15,000 families have come out of extreme poverty thanks to World Vision Rwanda's A Thrive Project. Some of those whose lives have been transformed through World Vision Rwanda's three-year Thrive program are Mukanawana Victory and Naneza Anatoli. They say the project has transformed their lives, especially through mindset shift. When World Vision came, we were encouraged to form transformative groups. We started saving from a small amount of money. The first year, we were saving 400 Rwandan francs. On the second year, after my life was transformed, I increased to 2,500 per week. The saving helped me to transform my life. My children went to school and I later acquired a loan and used it to transform my life and implement different projects.
We learned five principles that transformed our mindset, hence impacting our financial lives. I now do small business and poultry and pig farming. I also do agriculture. In the next few years, I want to renovate my house and make it modern. Pauline Okumu, the National Director at World Vision Rwanda, is proud of the fact that close to 99% of the families that benefited through the program managed to elevate from extreme poverty. We're just here to share lessons learned from the Thrive Project that began three years ago. And um, the main aim of it was actually to improve the livelihood uh, of uh, a poor household, the most vulnerable household. And um, I'm excited to indicate that within that three-year uh, span, we've actually seen uh, a lot of strides that have been made. The Thrive program was implemented in Jisagara, Huye, Lusizi, and Gachenye districts. 15,287 families benefited from the program, focusing on women and girls. Welcome back to Health Matters with the improvement and advancement in the treatment of uh, kidney diseases uh, by using the substitute method, also known as a kidney transplant in Rwanda. Uh, for the first time, a symposium on kidney and its uh, treatment as well as uh, the disease prevention has been held in Kigali. Christel Uase attended and brought us this report. Mahte Karangwa is one of the victims of this disease but has been given the opportunity for his kidney to be replaced. He confessed that it had been helpful to him as it contributed to his health. It represents the opportunity Rwandans are given and shows that health institutions in Rwanda are working well. Simply, it's amazing. Now I'm doing well, life is going well. They put me on nine months medication. I followed the doctor's instructions and took my medication well, and now my life went back to being normal. A kidney doctor at Kanombe Military Hospital, Dr. Nyenye Liev Darlen, confirms that the kidney disease treatment in Rwanda has improved so far, but also this disease is dominated in young people. The government supports all those that need the treatment where it is needed. As doctors, we see them in hospitals, and many of them are young people that have kidney disease that was not caused by these metabolic diseases. But also, we have many on the list that will give the treatment. The Rwanda Biomedical Center appreciates the pivotal role of Rwanda in the development of kidney diseases treatment by facilitating kidney transplant to patients and thus supports the citizens to get the treatment at a low cost using their health insurances and they are putting effort in encouraging people to fight this disease. Yes, there's the development in kidney treatment, but also there's a rise of root causes. The Ministry of Health set measures of providing a free test on these metabolic diseases, including kidney disease, in the Rwanda community. But mostly we are setting measures on how to avoid these diseases by doing sports, avoid smoking and alcohol, plus seeing the doctor for testing the state of our health. So far in Rwanda, kidney disease is on the rise, but also there is a big improvement in treatment, most especially in kidney transplantation. Since 2010, when Rwanda started sending people abroad for kidney transplantation, the figures provided by Rwanda Biomedical Center about 100 of them have been treated under kidney transplantation service, including 24 that has been mainly treated in Rwanda in less than a year. And those with kidney disease are close to 1,000. Christelle Oase, RTV News. 
The International Association of Professional Accountants, ICPAR, has signed an agreement with the African Youth Development Agency, Johnson International, which aims to provide loans for all students who want to study accounting. Cedric Irakoze has the details. According to reports, Chance International, in conjunction with ACPA, say it will be resolved soon. The chief operating officer of Chance International says that education requires a lot of property and energy. Accounting professionals are in demand in any organization, which is any nation which is developing. So we see that Rwanda is developing. Uh, it's one of the fastest developing economies. When investors come, most of them ask whether do you have accounting professionals. We also need more funding uh, to educate students. It's, uh, it's not very easy. As of now, uh, we have 3,500 students. The head of board of director of the company, Amin Mirango, has raised concerns about whether all students will be allowed to participate. Uh, for us as a professional body, the difference between a university and a professional body like ICPA is that for us, we never leave you. But now, you can't do them when you're not a professional accountant. So uh, it means that we are always in touch with our members, we are always in touch with our graduates. And uh, now that uh, uh, we, we are beginning now to have uh, big numbers of people now who are coming through the CPNCT program. Students are expected to start studying in May and take the first exam in July. Cedric Kirakose, RBA News. The Africa College of Theology here in Kigali held its first accredited graduation ceremony, providing certificates to 150 students and other graduates have been urged to use the knowledge they have acquired properly, avoiding teachings that, lead, uh, that mislead their believers. The college's administration has commended the progress that has been made since its establishment, training for character formation, academic competence and professional skills. Thousands of volumes of books in theology, leadership and related fields, professors from all around Africa and beyond and accredited by both Rwanda's High Education Council and the Association of Christian Theological Education in Africa. It was founded in 2013 and accredited in 2020, providing Bachelor of Arts in Theology and Leadership as well as the postgraduate studies. And it's uh, from this that we come to the end of our tonight's edition. On behalf of the entire news production as well as the te technical team that made it happen, uh, many thanks for being with us. And we wish you a safe and a great fun-filled weekend. Goodbye.